Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, welcome to this uh, session on the usage of knowledge graph on a slightly different domain than the usual ones, uh, because we are going to see how they can be used um, in the domain of safety management. Uh, in particular, we are going to see how uh, knowledge graph can be used to unleash the power of creating new insights on uh, safety issues. You know, when we talk about safety, we normally uh, consider that as a property of a system where nothing bad happens. Like, uh, you know, my driving by car is safe if you don't have accidents. Uh, okay, that doesn't really apply in any domain because, uh, uh, you know, the risk is that uh, you don't have any information on uh, on what is happening. So um, you really may want to get more data on, on your domain. And in this perspective, what at the industry level has, uh, um, has started happening over uh, the last few decades is the need to report not just big events, disasters, but also minor consequences events. And we call them near misses, like cases where things went wrong but not dramatically bad and we know that by statistics that's a definitely higher sample that's a definitely higher uh, quality uh, set of data uh, but the question is that those data will be at the same time also fragmented so not necessarily um, easy to, to analyze and that's where we'll see in this presentation how via knowledge graph uh, we can do something in this regard. Uh, I'm Ricardo Patriarca and I'm a professor at the University of Rome, uh, Sapienza. And uh, the other speaker is Francesco Simone, who is a PhD candidate at Sapienza University as well. Um, you know, we talked on, uh, on this work and we also want to uh, give a special mention to our two colleagues, Patrizia Agnello and Silvia Ansaldi, uh, who are not presenting this work with us today, but they will they highly contributed in this development and in the conceptualization of what we did here. Both work at INAIL, that is the National Insurance Agency uh, for Accident at Work uh, in Italy. And uh, you will see how they, they contributed to what we're going to present in the next few minutes. So, um, you know, if you look at this picture, uh, you may not be able to read it completely, but you see that something wrong is happening here. And we're talking indeed of a picture taken at the Seveso place. Seveso is a small village in Italy, northern part of Italy, and is um, infamous for uh, the so-called Seveso disaster. Uh, uh, an accident happened in 1976 which was tremendously critical for uh, animals, people living there uh, that need to be evacuated for the release of, of a toxic gas in a plant. You know, the event was so dramatic that at, at European level, uh, it was decided a few years later to build what is called the Seveso Directive. Um, that is a way to regulate the management of um, critical substances in industrial uh, plants and operations. Uh, up to that moment, there have been two other releases of the Seveso, Seveso 2 and Seveso 3, and today it's still mandatory to have that kind of uh, uh, reporting in all uh, European states. If you see in this graph what happens 1970 uh, decades, you see, there has been an increase in reports, and then from 1990s, it seems to be relatively stable. Maybe we notice a small decrease in the reports. What we have in the y-axis again is the number of major accidents. And you see, even if there is a small decrease, it seems that uh, we are not reaching zero, uh, zero level. So uh, luckily, there are still a good number of accidents uh, per decade, major accidents, uh, in industrial facilities in Europe. Uh, so we are far beyond the level of 1970s. And what could be there? Uh, how can we make that more uh, safe? How can we improve the safety level? How can we get back to the 1970s? Do you have any idea, Francesco? 
<laughs> Maybe we can stop reporting. <laughs> oh, yes, that's, that's the clear solution. You know, before yeah. 1970s, we didn't have any accidents. So that's that was a safe time, not today. Well, luckily, that's not true, as you can imagine, because uh, we didn't have the reported accidents before then. But after service of directive, we know that we need to investigate those events. So the high number of events were most likely was the same even before. We just didn't notice. So uh, <clears throat> with this assumption that we cannot stop reporting, we really need to delve into the concept of near misses and how they can be paired with knowledge graphs. And that's where I would ask you, Francesco, to get on. Okay, so if we uh, are not able to, you know, if our aim is to lower the number of incident and accident, uh, but we still learn from, from their occurrences, uh, so there is a possibility that we can uh, learn something from uh, near misses. And uh, this work uh, started on this assumption that uh, uh, we believe, and also in literature it has been recognized, that uh, uh, near misses, uh, reporting near misses, uh, could be used as a proactive tool uh, for, safe, for safety management, uh, since they can provide uh, a lot of information comparable to the one obtained by major accident. So, but what is a near miss? Uh, by definition, uh, we can define near miss all those events that could have caused an incident or a damage to health or even a fatality, but uh, they did not. Uh, so here, for example, we can see in the picture that in the Simpson here, there are three days without an accident, but we can see uh, Lenny uh, that is falling down from the stairs here and Homer that is holding the plutonium with just one hand and leaving his uh, P PPE. Uh, so these are examples of near misses. Uh, but uh, uh, how a near miss look like, uh, at least in Italy? because uh, thanks to uh, email, uh, we had available a database of near misses from, uh, from, from Italy, of course. Uh, here in this slide, I, we put uh, an example, an exemplary near miss. Uh, uh, it is a free text document, so uh, operators uh, and uh, practitioners in industry can write whatever they want to, to describe the near misses. Uh, there is no standard form. Uh, so, for example, here we see uh, this kind of a table form, but it's not standardized. So, uh, every industry, uh, every industrial establishment can report near miss as, as they want. Uh, they are made up of linguistic data, so it, it's a narrative. And uh, apparently, uh, all these documents are unrelated uh, one from each other. There is no clear uh, connection from uh, to between all these documents. Uh, so here we start thinking about uh, uh, using a knowledge graph to uh, uh, try to find a correlation and exploit some some knowledge from this uh, text document. Uh, to do so, a first step uh, was about uh, uh, defining an ontology from for industrial air misses. Uh, so we, in collaboration with INAIL, uh, developed uh, this uh, ontology model that is made up of nine node labels, so we can define nine type of entities, uh, namely industrial sector, industrial establishment, uh, documents that uh, uh, represent the Hermes document itself, and then uh, the content of the document can be uh, labeled as uh, safety barrier, people involved in the event, apparatus, uh, some description of the event itself, uh, the activity and uh, the substance involved. Uh, these entities, these labels uh, relate uh, uh, through seven relationship types. Uh, so for example, uh, an activity could involve a substance. Uh, or uh, an a barrier can be part of an apparatus. Uh, okay, so based on this ontology, uh, we had uh, a, a database of almost 4,000 reports from 250 industrial establishment. We tag all this data and we use a Cypher query to import all the data uh, 
from a from two data tables into Neo4j, uh, getting a graph with uh, 45,000 nodes and 75,000 relationships circa. Uh, here, uh, a screenshot of the uh, of the graph from from Bloom, just a really small extract uh, excerpt. Uh, you can find more information in the reference that we put here. But the interesting thing was, uh, well, how uh, can we exploit the construction of the knowledge graph uh, to to get some uh, some information about safety? Uh, so we uh, developed a river completeness metric based on a weight that we assign to nodes. Uh, to assign the weight to nodes, uh, we uh, conducted uh, interviews to subject matter experts, and we use a multi-criteria decision-making technique to assign nodes uh, weights to, to, to nodes. So we transform a flat knowledge graph uh, by means of an unweighted graph to a, a, a graph that has weights on uh, on node on nodes. Uh, in this way, we were able to uh, have some uh, some visualization to to e e to extract knowledge from from the graph. For example, here uh, we have uh, every point in the graph in the in the plot uh, represent an industrial establishment the color referred the industrial establishment to an industrial sector and we can see how the establishment is positioned by means of the number of reports and uh, the completeness that the establishment can guarantee uh, in the near miss reporting also aggregate results for industrial sector sectors are uh, put uh, uh, on the frequency distribution on the top and on the uh, right of the picture. Uh, another visualization that we built uh, was about a temporal overview, a temporal analysis of the uh, trend of completeness uh, by means of uh, industrial sectors. Uh, again, on this plot, we can see the number of reports uh, grouped by the date of collection, so when they were collected in the database, and uh, the average completeness uh, they can guarantee in the uh, description of the near miss event. And uh, the point on the plot moves uh, uh, year by year by means of industrial sector. Uh, for example, here we can see the orange industrial sector uh, is going up by means of completeness, but it's also lowering the uh, number of reports uh, of near misses. Uh, one last uh, uh, visualization. Uh, you know, the, the first two were kind of standard visualization, but the fact that we uh, put uh, data inside the knowledge graph also open uh, a whole new uh, world of possibilities for visualization. For example, we uh, were also able to uh, create our custom visualization. We call this one uh, a flower plot. Uh, and for time reason, I cannot delve in into specific of this plot, but uh, um, we have uh, it was meant to uh, analyze uh, uh, semantics, so the terms that were used and were tagged uh, in the in the ontology and how much they uh, are present in the complete, let's say, complete near miss reports. And so, uh, overall, uh, what we conclude uh, near miss uh, using near miss uh, uh, data where you know, it seems not really possible because they were disconnected, but by by using knowledge graph, uh, it is possible to have a proactive safety management. So we are not have we do not have to wait the accident to occur, but we can rely on near misses. Uh, then the knowledge graph permit, uh, let's say, a safety data fusion, so we can have uh, information about a, a lot of establishment, a different industrial sector. Uh, all on the same uh, data structure, and we can query the data structure and get knowledge for them. Uh, and for future development, uh, we would like to uh, uh, 
use a, a predictive approach so not just describing how much reports are complete or useful but also uh, use some graph-based machine learning algorithm to predict how a report can be complete so uh, to, to, to support practitioners and also investigators uh, to to to, to uh, to enhance safety in uh, in critical uh, industrial establishment as the service ones are and uh, that's all from our side if there are any questions I, I think we have no more time remaining uh, by the way thank to everyone who followed the presentation and uh, if you have any question you can write us on uh, 